What's wrong with my flower? Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin show where I answer questions that hit Bakerpedia.com every day. I am Dr. Lin, CEO of Bakerpedia, the only place you should go to if you need all your technical questions answered on the go, just like that. What I do on the show is to answer the questions that are most important to commercial bakers. Yes, you know, when your line is running at 150 cuts a minute, who has the time to do an hour-long research on the internet and sometimes not coming back with anything? Well, this is what the show is about. Place any comments on the topics that you're researching on the Wikipedia, and if you're lucky, I'll answer, it. I'll answer them on the show. All right, I'm going to focus today's show on flour. We just get too many questions on flour from commercial bakers. The first one today is from Kevin in California. Kevin asks, why does H flour matter? We receive real car flour that takes three weeks to arrive and till we get to use it. So the other day we were just thinking about getting flour from a mill nearby and they delivered by trucks into our silos. The flour performed like a weaker flour with less absorption and needed more dough conditioners to make it less sticky at the dough divider. The protein and specs are all the same. The only difference I see is that the truck flour is fresher than the real car flour. Does the age of flour really matter for commercial bakeries like mine? Well, so what is age flour? The exact origin of age flour is not known. Many decades ago, flour was stored for a long period of time before it was used. This slowly oxidizes the flour and it ages over time. This makes flour stronger over time and aging improves flour strength due to oxidation, especially to the lipid protein portions of the flour, and thus improves water absorption and machinability. These days, we have dough oxidizing agents or dough conditioning ingredients like ADA and ascorbic acids that help provide the aging or oxidizing. Now, due to the development and the improvements of these dough conditioning ingredients, we have grown less dependent on aged flour. And that is why many bakeries these days use freshly milled flour within 48 hours. However, just remember, H flour from real car are still the best. If you can't get real flour, real car flour, then flour from trucks are pretty doable with the right kind of dough conditioning ingredients. Dough from, uh, Tom from Washington asks, why does my mixing tolerance index or MTI vary from one batch of flour to the next batch? Does the ascorbic acid added at the mill affect MTI? Thanks, Tom. There are many misconceptions about MTI. If you type in a farina graph, you will find the different definitions for the farina graph, and one of those is the MTI, which gives a good indication of the breakdown of the dough over time. The higher the MTI, the more resistant the dough is to breaking down. Now, ascorbic acid helps improve the MTI, and in some cases, like yours, is added at the mill. I had a client once where there was excessive MTI at the mixer and in order to get the dough to a point where they could get a good pan flow, they had to overmix it. On further analysis, we found that the mill had equipment failure and overdosed on the ascorbic acid. Therefore, when, they, when that was solved, the MTI went down and it was normal again. This case is a great example why I use to tell bakers to not add any dough conditioners or oxidizers at the mill level. It's better that you are in control of dosing these dough conditioning ingredients at the plant level. The next one is from Pierre in New York. Pierre asks, I think the additional of nutrients in our flour in the U.S. is unnecessary. I think it makes people obese. That is why I use flour from France. Can I get an unenriched flour to bake my products? Well, Pierre, Pierre, in the United States, as in most parts of the world, fortification of food was initiated as a systemic approach to correct 
identified nutrient deficiencies in populations. Flour is one of those foods. It is enriched with niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, iron, folic acid, and mainly because um, of the milling process. The milling process extracts um, these nutrients from white flour. Um, so we have to put it back. So uh, in fact, after the fortification of folic acid in the 1990s, we saw a drop in birth defects like spina bifida and such. The amount of fortification in white flour is being mentioned on our topic page and it is absolutely necessary in this country. And no, you can't get white flour unfortified here in the U.S. So does fortification make people obese? While it is easy relating the start of fortification to the increase in obesity, it is really not the cause of it. If you have to think about it, there are other factors like the introduction of desk jobs and the huge decline in physical activity. Um, also, the increase in the accessibility of high caloric food and increased screen time with Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and people sitting on the couch. So let's not make fortification the culprit because the only thing they are contributing to is the improvement in the nutrition of our flour and baked goods. Ralph from India asks, can I use any bread flour with a speck of 12% for hand bread production? What is the difference between clear flour and patent flour? Can I use clear flour in bread making? Well, Ralph, that is about the right level of protein for pan bread production. Depending on the kind of flour, if it's a spring or a winter wheat, it should work well for pan bread production. I would personally favor a blend of spring and winter wheat to get a more stable quality flour. The difference in clear and patent flour can be found here. On the patent flour page, as you can see, patent, is, uh, patent flour is the highest quality commercial great baking flour you can get. It's premium, therefore it is the most expensive of all the flour. Most refined white wheat flours are patent, are patent flours. On the other hand, clear flour is not the kind of flour you might want to use for bread making, regardless if it has a 12% protein. On this page, it will tell you that clear flour, although higher in nutrition, it is darker and it's darker because it's got more bran particles in it. So whether you decide on clear or patent flour based on price as usual, you have to understand that there are distinct differences between the two of them. And I would rather than not that you use clear flour as that can be used for less functional bakery items like cookies. If you decide to go with a mix of these flour, you um, mix of clear and patent, you may end up adding more vile wheat gluten emulsifiers and dough conditioners to strengthen the dough. These, of course, is doable, but also not very cost effective. So go with a higher mix of patent flour at about 11 to 12% proteins for a consistent quality bread product. And um, that's all the flour questions I can take today. Remember, if you have more questions, we have a flour and ingredient quality boot camp coming up at the Wheat Marketing Center. Click here on this link to sign up. They are limited sitting, so sign up today. All right, it's time to wrap it up. Thank you to Parados for sponsoring the research and writing for dough conditioners. It is people and companies like Parados that sponsor our research so that we can write for you for free. So keep Bakerpedia free. Support our sponsors. Till the next time bakers have any questions, Bakerpedia. Bye.